So yes, welcome, welcome. We shall get started in about five, well, no, three minutes. So feel free to settle in. Also, if you wanted to put into the chat the name of your organization or your business, and if it's a for-profit or a non-profit, that does help to guide how deep I go into certain grants that are available. But looking forward to digging in. And like I said, we'll give it about three minutes for people to filter in. And if you're here to learn about what grants are available and out there currently, you're in the right place. This is the grant info session that we do monthly. So also we're gonna be recording it and having it available throughout the month. So if you have other people that you know that might want the information and miss this recording, that will be available so you can share. The slide deck will be uh, shared as well. So don't feel like you have to screenshot and try to keep up. We will email that afterwards so that you can uh, refer to it. But yes, so we'll give it about two minutes. I usually have our elevator music, but I'm hearing that it doesn't work anymore. Let me see if it works. Okay, you have to tell me if you can hear this. Is it coming through? Not as no. yet. No, it's <laughs> right on my computer. I, no, but you got to do share screen and then push audio only. So click on share screen. No, I mean, like it's playing right beside me. No, nah, we can't. Not through? <laughs> no. The noise canceling on this thing has been improved. Yes. Let's see if I can find the spot. It is 105, Ryan. I'll have to show you how you could share sound and not your screen as well. So um, we, 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 oh, <laughs> you can cute. just have it in the background. Yes. If you go advanced on, and for anyone on Zoom, um, advanced, and then it gives you an option to share sound only. So Ooh. that is the way. <laughs> that is advanced moves, man. Advanced techniques. <laughs> So again, oh, let me just make sure I got this proper. You see my screen. Uh, thank you, thank you for joining us. We are here talking about funding and grant opportunities. And this is a session that we do once a month just to make sure that you're kept in the loop of different uh, funding options, different ways to get, uh, I would call it, and my mantra for 2024 is getting your bank account to match your vision. A lot of times we have these big visions and not the money to actually execute or we try to operate and we're at max stress level because it's day to day and week to week trying to manage the cash flow. Real quick, if you could change your name to uh, the name you want to be addressed as, that way, if you do ask a question or raise your hand, I'm able to I'll call the right name. And don't feel like you have to put on your camera. We're going to be mostly in presentation mode. But if you are asking a question, we would ask to come on camera to ask it. But definitely raise your hand as you have thoughts or questions, but also use the chat because sometimes I'll probably be going 
do the presentation. And then if you have a question and you don't want to forget it, definitely put it into the chat and we'll be getting uh, we'll be getting to all the questions by the Q&A section. And please do mute your mic as we're going through the presentation so that it doesn't uh, chip in and out. One thing we do want to do is acknowledge the first people on their traditional land. So I would like to begin by acknowledging the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. While we meet today on a virtual platform, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the lands which, which we each call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people that call this land home. Please join me in a moment of reflection to acknowledge the effect of residential schools and colonialism on indigenous families and communities and to consider how we are and can each in our own way try to move forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. All right, thank you so much. So a little bit about Empowered for X, who is hosting uh, this session today. Empowered for X is a collaborative community that offers consulting, training, business support, and co-working spaces. So there is a physical location in Brampton that you can visit, use as a virtual office, and also as an office to co-work out of. So they do have private offices and space to rent either daily, weekly, or monthly. And we are definitely committed to support you entrepreneurs and organizational leaders to be a top performance leader and exponentially amplify the difference that you make. Trainings that we do offer include a social enterprise certification program. We have the mental health standard certification and mental health supporting youth certification and our online training course for building your grant blueprint is called Grant Hunter University. So if everything that I'm talking about, you would love to get it all in uh, kind of a go at your own pace course format, Grant Hunter University is there for you. And as I mentioned, we do offer virtual office addresses. So if you're still using your home address for your main address, uh, please don't because people will just show up at your house for meetings and or to solicit your business have a virtual office address, and we do have satellite locations in Brampton, Scarborough, and Ottawa, and we are looking to expand that into additional cities. We can help you with your marketing strategy and execution. Of course, we can help you with your grant writing if you just want to take this off your plate and have a fund development team do the work for you. We can help you with technology builds, whether they're apps or websites, business management, and also putting together your business plan. Also, stay in, to, stay in tune for the BizGrams uh, live show from the owner, Chris Beth Cowley, who's going to be, who usually does it daily and spotlights a lot of the entrepreneurs and leaders in our community. So if you're interested in being interviewed, definitely let us know. Even you can put that in the chat if you're up to it and we'll follow up with you. So a little about the different ways you can interact with Empower Forex. We start on the left side of the spectrum with the DIY, so doing it yourself, definitely coming to these info sessions and learning about what's out there and then going forward and getting those applications done. And also, as I mentioned, Grant Hunter University, where you can go at your own pace with our online course to finish your grant blueprint that'll help you find and apply for uh, grants that are out there. In between, we do have paid services that can help you get a funding summary done so we can create a list of all the grants and funding that apply directly to your organization or your business. We can help you with doing the blueprint. We can review grants that you may have written or your business plan if you're looking to get a loan funding and also our working groups. So our working groups are where we find a grant and then as a group come together to go through every single question step-by-step step, to make sure that we get your application done as a group and you're able to ask questions specific to your application. And then there's modify, making others do it for you, which is really making us do it for you. So maybe it should be moodify. 
but we offer the grant writing services. We offer business plan services, marketing services. So things that you need a team to handle that department, you can actually hire us to work with you and get those things done so that you can focus on what you do best, whatever that may be in the business. All right, so one thing to keep in mind, we do have a grant working group coming up. So this Friday, Monday, and next Friday, we are tackling the Foundation for Black Communities. So this grant is one that we're gonna to touch on briefly as we go through, but it's due February 1st, and it's a, it has three different streams. So you can have up to 40,000, up to 100,000, or up to 250,000. So each day we're gonna to be touching on a different stream. So as I go through it today, you might see the stream that more aligns with where you are, and we're going to do an info session or an actual working group specifically for that stream. And of course, monthly, we have these info sessions. So definitely share with people that you know that might uh, be working on projects and needing funding and grants or funding could help. Definitely let them know about these info sessions that happen monthly. And of course, we do want to say thank you to our valued partners, ranging from Alterna Savings to SETSI, which is the social economy through social inclusion, uh, Sheridan and their EDGE program, the Entrepreneurship Discovery and Growth Engine, Calabash, which is a cooperative of expert service providers in the Black community so that we can support you at, for consultants or helping you to actually do grant writing as well for any projects that you have for your business or your organization. ZSC, which is Zeus Services Enterprise, they are business advisor partners. So if you sign up for like ACBN and fill out our business needs assessment, they would reach out to you as our business advisory partner. Uh, the Dream Legacy Foundation, which focuses more on tech founders. So if you have a tech product or if you're building an MVP, definitely look out for their Black Innovation Fellowship. That'll help you go through the process. And they're partnered with the DMZ that's inside of Ryerson slash TMU, the Toronto Metropolitan University, to help you get the MVP done and seek that initial seed funding. One full circle, which we like to call our kind of a partner organization in Quebec, and they're out based out of Montreal, doing similar work with supporting entrepreneurs in that region. And of course, the Toronto Community Benefits Network. Shout out to Rosemary Powell and their team there. They've been supporters of the work that we've done right from the very beginning. So always want to say thank you and appreciate that support. So real quick, the agenda, you will be meeting the facilitator, which is myself. So you technically met me, but I'll tell you a bit about my background. Uh, we are going to do an overview of the grants and some of the loan funding that is out there and also touch on how we can help you to make sure that you do not feel stuck because a lot of information will be coming to you. But once you get the information, want to make sure that you find what is relevant to you and get those applications in because the one way to miss the money is to not apply. Yes, it's not guaranteed that every application that we put in is going to be approved, but we know the ones that we don't put in are automatically uh, declined. So let's make sure and at least get our applications in. I'd like to introduce myself. Our, the facilitator for today is me, Ryan Knight. I do consider myself a serial social entrepreneur. I run a social enterprise called Detailing Nights, which provides mobile waterless car cleaning. So we go to people's houses, their offices, clean their cars on the spot without using water and our plant-based eco-friendly cleaning supplies. And what I'm most proud of with our company is our youth entrepreneurship program, where we teach high school, college, and even university students how to start their own business, running a mini version of our car cleaning company. And we've worked with even youth out of school and sometimes coming out of detention to show them they actually have the potential to start a business instead of only uh, looking for a job. Also, Service Kingdom, which is our social enterprise consultancy firm. So if you are a nonprofit thinking of starting a social enterprise or a for-profit that wants to operate more like a social enterprise, we offer that service of business development for social enterprises. Also, Executives Power Up. So if you are a business that is looking to start to scale up and looking for investment, typically past the seed round of investments, 
we have executives power that helps to put that C-suite level of team into your company. So the CEO, CTO, CMO, these areas of a business, if you have a strong team in the C-suite, it makes it more investable. So we help to build out that team for you. And Black Panther's Cage, think of Shark Tank or Dragon's Den, but with Black founders pitching to Black investors and additional supports that is in development. So look out for that coming out soon. And as I mentioned, I'm one of the co-founders of the African, oh my gosh, the Afro-Caribbean Business Network and also part of the Empowered Forex business crew. And really, we just exist to help businesses make sure we increase your capacity so that you can create an asset that will build generational wealth for your family and the community as well. A little bit about ACBN. We did start six years ago, really because we were seeing a gap where businesses that were looking to scale did not have a Black-focused business organization to tap into. So we brought six other entrepreneurs together, said, could we create this entity that would sit down with an entrepreneur, figure out what stage their business is in, and then help them create a strategy to grow their companies exponentially. Thus, ACBN Canada was born. And over the past six years, we've been able to engage with over 5,000 Black entrepreneurs. We've been able to support about 74, I think that's now 74% of them were finding our female entrepreneurs and in our database, about 91% are either the business founder or the CEO. And now what we're really proud of is being able to partner with other black focused business organizations. So there are over 40 across Canada being able to now, no matter what stage your business is in, there is the right support out there. And also what geography you're in across Canada, we're able to point you in the right direction. And I know for ACBN, entrepreneurship is a foundational piece of what we do. It's one of the best tools that we've seen to build economic empowerment. And so we do these convenings, whether they're in person or online, to make sure that we're sharing notes. A lot of the times we're finding resources or finding things that can support your business. So we want to make sure to be able to have sessions like this so that we can get that information to you. And of course, we are here for that access to funding. Where research has been done that shows it's difficult, not just for Black entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs in general to raise the capital that they need, as I mentioned, so that the bank account is matching the vision that they want to execute. So we, again, we've been able to build our own microloan program so we can loan up to $10,000 to entrepreneurs, and we're plugged into other loan programs to make sure that you have direct access. So I always like to show a bit of our track record. So ACBN, again, we've been around for about six years, but this list of funding that we've been able to get ranges from pitch competitions to city grants, provincial grants, even federal grants, also sponsorships and donations from corporations, and also as low as $500 all the way up to over a million dollars. And what I wanted to convey is the, the ability to be persistent. I do not consider myself an academic grant writer, but I do consider myself a grant hunter and will always be on the lookout for any and every funding that we qualify for to make sure that we get those applications in so that it increases our probability of success. And over the past six years, as I mentioned, I think this is closing in, in on over $2 million of funding that we've been able to get and really because we're able to identify what's out there and then make sure to get that application in. And by all means, these were not the only ones that we applied for, but let's say we applied for 50, we were able to get these ones to get through, but that, that takes into account that persistency and consistency that you need when looking at grant funding. And again, what I enjoy the most is actually helping others get access to funding as well. As we learn about how to get funding, it allows us to teach others or support them in getting funding as well. Whether it's a nonprofit like Rescue Youth International, where they're able to get access to the Investment Readiness Program, Custodia, where they are for-profit, but again, being able to become aware of this grant that was available, and then them being able to get funding for the great work that they do. Or if they're a social enterprise like New Life Project, again, being able to show them what exists and walk them through the process of getting that grant and them being successful. And then beyond just telling people about it or helping them write their own applications, 
we've been able to position ourselves as a trustee. So for a Seventh Adventist church, they weren't able to apply for the grant on their own, but our organization wor uh, worked as a trustee for them so we can be the lead and then help them get access to funding. And same with Youth Village, being able to add that organization into a grant that we were already writing so that even though they were new and up and coming, we were able to support them by putting them onto our budget line. And then they were able to get funding to get their organization off the ground in a less stressful way, being able to have uh, some funding to start. So one thing I did wanna just touch on quickly, uh, the grant writing blueprint is something that we can help you go through. We won't have time to really dig into it today, but it does consist of making sure the questions that you're gonna see on grant applications are answered ahead of time. So this is what the Grant Hunter University does is walks you through the process to complete your grant blueprint. So these grants that we're gonna to mention today, one tip that I would give you is to make sure that every grant that you go after, all the questions that they ask, save those questions and your answers into a Google document. That way, the next time that you go for that grant or go for any grant, you have a good majority of the questions already answered. And I remember with Detailing Nights, we were running our youth program and thinking that, you know, we deserve grants because we're already doing this great work, but we were always being declined. And it wasn't until we were able to hire a grant writer to at least review what we were submitting and then also partnering with a nonprofit that really strengthened our grant we were able to be successful with the Youth Opportunities Fund and getting access to over $200,000. Now that approved application became our blueprint. And for the next, uh, running the company for like almost 10 plus years after that grant, it's now to say that became the blueprint for getting additional grants. So we do wanna help you get that blueprint done ahead of time. And especially the ones that we help you get that are successful, we want to make sure and use that as a template. So that's what we do is help you build out that template for yourself. We also share with you our budget and work plan templates. Uh, so not just project description, but also the work plan and the budget. You get access to all of those templates when you work with us through the Grant Hunter University. Another great resource that you can use is the Business Benefits Finder tool. So being able, actually, I can open this up so you can get an idea of what it looks like. And I do need to make sure that I fix this link, but I think I did. If I didn't, I'll pull it up really quick. And this is a link that I will put into the chat as well. So you can follow along if you've never been on this page before. Just see, this opens up. All right. Oh, I think I see what it's doing. It is trying to go to the one that I was already working on. So let's see if I just go here. This should fix. Yes. All right. So I'll put this link into the chat. So that way you can follow along with me. All right. So it's really a fill in the blank. So you're able to just answer some questions about your business. So if you're looking for grants and funding, also what the amount you're looking for, what the main goal is that you're trying to do. So if it's grow and expand, you can check the rest. So you can check to see uh, which area of the country you're in. and which industry you're in. All right, so it does ask you, see, number of employees, four, and our revenue is around there. Let's see, we are incorporated and we're a not-for-profit and we're looking for programs that supports, let's see, oh, actually, our organization has Canadians, women, and youth, okay. And then typically I show all the programs, but if you only wanted to see ones that are currently available, you can definitely just go into, uh, you can click that option as well. 
So now what it'll do is it'll bring up all the federal programs and different resources that can support your organization or your business. And this is something that you want to come back and check uh, frequently, at least every other week. That way, if anything might have been closed before, you'd be able to see that it's now open. So for grants and funding, let's see. Let's see what's currently open. They have digital literacy programs. I know this grant for economic development, that one's more so for nonprofits. Uh, they have grants for research and development. Let's see, grants to uh, hire employees that are oh, facing disabilities. They have the Canada Job Grant, which allows you to get a grant to have your employees go through training. So if there are specific skills that you need your employees to have, you can actually get a grant for up to $10,000 per employee for them to go through training. So you don't have to come out of pocket for the full cost. Let's see, funding for infrastructure, right? Uh, economic development, international development, uh, funding to attract foreign investment. You'll see they also have other like loan programs. So futurepreneurs there. I know they have the small Canada Small Business Financing Program. So it's a great resource just to look through, see if anything fits. And as you're going through any of these applications, again, if you get stuck, please let us know because we would love to help you get it done so that it gets in and not, uh, not miss it just because we didn't finish the application. All right, so the next set of grants that I wanted to show you, starting with the Black Opportunity Fund in partnership with CIBC. Let me pull this one up. So CIBC, they had created a funding program where you're able to get up to $250,000 as a loan for your business. And that can be for equipment or leasehold improvements and also for working capital. But what they found was not all business owners were ready to apply for the loan. So they created a grant program in partnership with the Black Opportunity Fund and the Black Chamber of Commerce, where you can go through programming to fine tune your business plan or get it done. And also your, your cash flow projections or improving your credit score or improving your financial literacy to prepare you to then apply for the loan. So they do have these initial programs, which range from business plan, uh, credit building. They do have a food incubator program now. But with these programs, as you complete different milestones, you're able to get access to the grant up to $2,000. And one thing that I did see is you're able to apply directly for the grant. So if you weren't interested in going to the uh, going for the CIBC business loan, you can just apply directly at this website, and I'll put this into the chat as well. So the Elevate Black Business allows you to let me make sure I can show you what I'm talking about. Oh, I think they might have changed it. Hold on, chamber.ca. They actually grab the program here. All right, so this uh, Avro Business Accelerator Program is the one that you want to check out. Okay, so we should in update this link. So if you use this link, then you'll be able to access the program. Oh, it does say that the next program is starting in January, so you might want to get on that quickly. This will be your homework for tonight, and it will not be your only homework because the next grant that we're looking at is the Digital Main Street, and they have a couple of grants that are available. And you may remember from previous sessions that we've done where we talked about their RAISE program, which was a $10,000 grant that has now been moved to the Ontario government. And unfortunately, it did close. So uh, notifications of people that got the funding have gone out and also notifications for those that need to submit additional um, requirements. So if people do not submit the requirements, funding will open back up. 
So stay tuned as we'll talk about um, the RAISE program. If they open it back up, we will send a notification for that. But two of the programs that they currently have open, and this is in the Ontario section, are the Canada Digital Adoption Program and the Ontario Grants. But what I'm hearing is the Ontario Grants is actually now combined into the Shop Here program. So Shop Here, you're able to get support with building an e-commerce website for free through uh, this grant. And after you get the, the platform built or the e-commerce store built, they help you with a grant to do the digital marketing for the store. So again, if you even if you have a website and you need to add e-commerce to it, I would use uh, this program. Or even if you have an e-commerce program already, I would still go through it so that they can help you fine tune it and you can get access to their grant program. So I'll put this link into the chat for you so you can check that out. But again, it is in the presentation that we'll be sharing. The Canada Digital Adoption Program is part of Digital Main Street. So when you do go to the website, you can look for that grant as well. It gives you up to $2,400 to help with online digital marketing and even getting equipment that will help you sell better if you need like POS systems. So that's, uh, and that one's up to $2,400. Uh, two grants that I noticed are typically missed in our, our community is the Summer Company Grant, which uh, youth under 30 can get access to $3,000 to start their businesses in the summer. This grant is about to come online because they want to see people's business plans as the summer is approaching. So stay tuned for that because as soon as it is open, we will let you know. And also the starter company program. Uh, different cities that have entrepreneur centers run the starter company program. They also run the summer company program. So if you have not connected with your entrepreneur center in your city, definitely reach out. Or if there's not one in your city, the one that's closest to you. So they're gonna be announcing when the summer company program's uh, active and the starter company program. I know through Toronto, they had two different streams. One was a female founder stream that actually just closed and the upcoming one is gonna be the general business stream. So stay tuned for that. When it does open, we will let you know. And when I talked about homework, I believe the summer jobs grant is do if not today it might be by friday so check out the summer jobs grant that's a federal grant and one thing that we we're telling our clients to do is book meetings with your local mp because the summer jobs grant for for-profit companies I believe you can get 50 to 75 percent back for any hires that you have in the summer and for nonprofits, you can get up to 100 percent back and they'll even pay a bit up front to help you hire so if you aren't getting this grant and you may have applied before and got declined, it is encouraged to call your MP, let them know about the work that you're doing and just make sure that they know who you are because these grants actually land on their desk. So they're the ones that are approving it. So if they've never heard of you before, they can only go by the application and that application, again, uh, on paper, it might not tell your whole story. So you always want to introduce yourself to different levels of government, hey, your counselor, your MPP, and your MP, let them know what you're working on. But again, for the summer grant, uh, making sure that the MPs in your writing understand what you're working on and how it aligns to their priorities. If you actually look up MP local priorities, every writing has their, they set their own local priorities. So it could be reducing uh, discrimination or economic development, maybe for youth or racialized communities. These are all things that if you're able to support with it, it aligns with what they're trying to get done uh, for their local priority. So research that, check to see what your local MP priority is, and then make sure you get your summer jobs grant in and you won't be starting from scratch. A couple of things around social enterprises. One that we've talked about is the social finance fund. And part of the social finance fund is the investment readiness grant. So that investment readiness grant has gone through two iterations. I hear they're working on 3.0. So as that develops, we will definitely keep you in the loop 
because that was one of the best grants that we've seen to support social enterprises, whether it's a nonprofit or a for-profit that is running a social enterprise. We definitely want to see that come back online. And we definitely want to see that become permanent because the social finance fund is that next stage where they're investing into social enterprises. So they haven't announced the criteria for that next phase where they're investing in social enterprises. They are working on selecting intermediaries that are going to create the criteria. So as that comes online, we will definitely let you know. But one thing that is open right now for social enterprise is the Foundation for Black Communities Big Ideas Grant. So I'll open this one up just to give you a quick overview. So the Foundation for Black Communities was really created to be an entity that increases the amount of philanthropic funding that goes to the Black community. The Bridge and Build Fund, which is part of their Big Ideas, Black Ideas Grant, is now their first granting that's coming out of the endowment fund that they received from the federal government. So they were awarded $200 million to create an endowment fund, and now they're, be, they're able to grant against it. And again, I'm no expert in endowment funds, but what I understand is pool of money gets invested, and then the money made from that investment, you're able to grant out. So it sounds like their investments are producing uh, dividends or producing additional uh, funding that they're going to be able to grant out almost $9 million to projects that support the Black community done by B3 organizations. And when they say B3, that means that the organization is Black-led, uh, Black-serving, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting where I forget. Black-led, Black-focused, and Black-serving, yes. So B3, you're able to apply. And the question that I keep getting, because their focus is on incorporated nonprofits and charities, but they also allow for unincorporated collaborative groups to apply. So if you're an incorporated nonprofit or a charity, for sure you should be applying for the Foundation for Black Communities. But if you're a for-profit business, this is where you need to kind of take off the for-profit hat and dig into the community work that you've already been doing and use that as a project that you can apply for here. This is where you do need an incorporated partner, a nonprofit partner. So if you haven't created a partnership or a collaborative agreement with any other nonprofits just yet, hey, ACBN, us, the Afro-Caribbean Business Network, we're willing to play that role to be your partner and trustee the funds for you so you can access this funding. But again, we will go way deeper into this when we talk on Friday, Monday, and next Friday during the working group. But there is a walkthrough that we did for this, um, this FFBC grant. So we're gonna share that link with you as well so you can watch the walkthrough. It's actually on my YouTube page. Oh, actually, let me see if I can just grab it for you and I'll put it into the chat. This way, where's my chat? Oh, chat is here. In case you can't wait for the email that we're going to send you, I will grab this link for you. And that way you can check it out. So it's Grant You Should Know Foundation for Black Communities. Where is link? And I'll put this into the chat for you. All right. And please do, when you come to our channel, like and subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers this year. So help us in our journey. But as we go back to the Foundation for Black Communities, a couple things to remember, they do have three streams. So the main stream is called core, their core stream, you're able to get up to $40,000. And that's more so for organizations that are just getting started, looking to maybe pay or hire for initial staff and also put some infrastructure in place. So maybe getting the strategic plan done or hiring consultants to help with their business plan or their uh, financials. The next tier is their catapult stream where you're able to get between 40,000 to 100,000 if you've already been operating this project and are a bit more established. So now you can get up to 75,000 if your project wants to test out a new idea 
or if you want to expand on a current idea that you've been already operating, you can get up to 100,000. Now for their capital stream, which is the biggest stream that goes up to 250,000, you do have to be a bit more established. So an unincorporated collaboration might not fit for this uh, stream, but if you are operating in multiple regions, so they do want to see that you're in multiple provinces, so at least two provinces, or if you're a national, if you have a national mandate, you'd be able to apply for their capital stream and get up to $250,000. So as I mentioned, our working groups are going to be on Friday, Monday, and next Friday. So this first one that's happening Friday, this one, I believe is January the 12th at 6.30 p.m., is going to touch on the core stream. So we're going to do an example of an application for the core stream. And whether you're an incorporated nonprofit or an unincorporated group, we'll show you how to approach the portal. On Monday, we're going to be talking about the catapult stream. So between 40,000 to 100,000, that application for projects that have already been operating and you want to either test a new idea or expand on a current idea. And on next Friday, which will be the 19th, January 19th at 6.30 again, and sorry, Monday, January the 15th is the capital stream. Friday, January the 19th will be the uh, capital stream where you can get up to 250,000. Again, this one is a bit more involved. They are asking you to have at least two years of financial statements and an operating budget and be able to show that you're in multiple regions. So not just Ontario, but in other provinces as well, or have a national mandate. So we will dive deeper into that one uh, January the 19th. All right, so as we wrap up the main presentation, I always just love to talk about other loans that are out there. I know we love to get grants because you do not have to pay them back, but the grant timelines are very, ah, you can't run your business or your organization only relying on grants because the timing is very difficult. A lot of times it takes three to six months for grants to come in. So if you're able to access loans, it allows you to execute things a lot quicker. And if you create a strong strategy that allows you to use the loan and leverage and grow your entity to have a return on investment, that money that you're making can now pay back the loan. So definitely if you're going for loans, make sure you have a strong business plan and a plan for those other funds. And again, there's for-profit focused ones where if your credit score is a bit lower, they're good, whether that's the ACBN microloan, also Access Community Capital Fund, or the Rise Asset Development. If your credit score is over 600, uh, access to the Meridian Accelerator Loan, Base Coalition, the Alterna and BDC program, and any of these Black entrepreneur bank loan programs through RBC, CIBC, uh, Bank of Montreal, Scotia Bank, and TD, and also Futurepreneur. So if you're looking at uh, traditional banking, they do want to see your credit score over 600. If it's a bit lower, there is options for that as well. All right. And one thing that we do want to leave you with is making sure that you know we want to see you win. And a lot of times these uh, these conversations or these topics can be overwhelming. If you feel that you do not have the time to be doing this research, you don't have the time to be writing, we offer those grant writing services for you. So definitely, I will put our information into the chat. But I always encourage you to do as much as you can on your own just so that you can get the feel for what grants are asking for you. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be doing our next working groups on Friday, January the 12th, Monday, January the 15th, and Friday, January the 19th. And I believe I saw in the chat, there was a request for the link. So let me just grab this for you and I can put it in. And normally the working groups are $75. But since you joined us on this info session, if you use code NETWORK, you should be able to get $25 off. So we would love to see you on Friday if you're interested in the core grant, on next Monday if you're interested in the Catapult stream, 
and next Friday the 19th if you're interested in the Capitol stream. All right. Other services that we do offer, again, if you want more of a do-it-yourself online course, Grant Hunter University is there to help you finish that grant writing blueprint. Because once that blueprint is done, applying for grants like the Foundation for Black Communities or any other ones that we find becomes a lot easier. If you do need help with uh, getting your cash flow done because your cash flow projections for your business, again, unlocks a lot of funding, especially for loans, we have that support for you and group coaching, we're going to be able to put together more group, group coaching programs so that, again, you don't need to hire a grant writer directly, but you do want to do it yourself. But as a group, we can get the costs reduced for you. But if you do need us to just take it off your plate and get it done, the cost does range up to $5,000 based on how complex the grant that we're going for or the funding that we're going after is but we're always here to support you so that you don't get stuck and you don't miss the money just because you didn't get the application in. So if you did want additional support or if you had specific questions that is very uh, focused on your business and you want a one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to uh, QR code this. Let me see if I can grab this link without having to move. I don't know if this will work. This might work. So this link allows you to fill out an initial form to let us know what you need support with, uh, what kind of grants you're looking for, and then we will have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you to dig deeper and make sure that you get the help that you need. All right. So we will open it up for questions. One quick thing. Remember, we have our info sessions monthly, so we are going to take this recording and being able to share it because we want to get our subscribers up so we got to use our youtube channel to its fullest and we're doing our working groups friday monday and next friday so we'd love to see you there and as always our websites are here but i'll put into the chat our email address connect at empowered for x.com if you do have any questions or need clarity but we are going to send you the recording and this a slide deck so that you're able to go through and review.